This right here is my favorite gaming handheld. It's surprisingly powerful, has a great screen, runs all my favorite ROMs, and no, I wasn't actually talking about the Steam Deck. This thing looks like a PSP, it actually fits in my pocket, and it can play anything from old Game Boy and Super Nintendo games all the way up to PS2 and GameCube, and better yet, I was able to put it all together by myself. And what I'm actually talking about here is the PS Pi, a mod that takes the already fantastic build quality and form factor of the original PSP 1000 and combines it with an infinitely faster Raspberry Pi Zero or Compute Module board, along with an upgraded screen and full support for various different Linux distributions designed for video game emulation. Now, sure, a lot of folks might rightly point out that you can do a lot with an original PSP using the various homebrew options that are already available for the console, and to some, the PS Pi might seem like a waste of otherwise perfectly good hardware. But can your PSP play Wii games? Because mine can. <laughs> and all this is made possible thanks to the incredible work done by a console modder named OtherMod, who has been doing this a lot longer than I have, and over the years, the PS Pi has gone from being a very impressive hack job to a very impressive and meticulous meticulously crafted set of PCBs that could be installed without making any irreversible modifications to the PSP console. And while these kinds of projects are really fun, I think they're even more fun when you're spending someone else's money, and that's why I'm legally obligated to take a few moments to thank JLC PCB for helping me get these circuit boards made. They actually asked if I wanted to make any cool videos using their services, and believe it or not, they wrote me a blank check to have these PS Pi boards made. Now, I've tried building a lot of electronics projects in the past, and honestly, I've never been that great at it, but with JLC PCB, you can focus on perfecting your design and have prototypes shipped to your door in just a few days. They offer everything from PCB layout manufacturing to metal 3D printing, 5-axis machining, and a whole lot of other services that I'm definitely not smart enough to use. And as far as I can tell, these are excellent quality boards, and with their dual-sided assembly service, I was able to let them do almost all of the soldering, and these things worked perfectly without any hiccups. And don't miss JLC PCB 6-layer PCB special, where you can get $30 off with a coupon and enjoy top quality 6-layer PCBs, plus a 2 micron ENIG finish and no engineering finish fees for via in pad. And finally, I should mention that if you want to get a PS Pi board for yourself, OtherMod also sells them on his store with all the firmware and everything already taken care of, and those boards are also made by JLC PCB, so either way, you'll be supporting the creator of the project and JLC PCB, which is a win-win in my opinion. All that to say, the PS Pi is, for all intents and purposes, a DIY project, and there's a lot of work involved in getting everything put together properly here. So for more detailed instructions, I'll guide you to OtherMod's website, where you can buy all of the components, as well as an awesome guide by Macho Nacho Productions, and the PS Pi tutorials by Bill at Make or Break Society, who really goes in depth on all of the very intricate stuff like soldering, and what extra parts you'll need to make sure you salvage from your PSP in order to complete the mod. I didn't find the assembly to be that difficult, but definitely a little time consuming. Uh, basically, you're going to get three boards, the main PS Pi board, which replaces the PSP's original motherboard, the headphone board, which replaces the PSP's headphone and memory reader board, and the optional compute module carrier board, which allows you to snap on a Raspberry Pi compute module and plug it into the back of the main PS Pi board. The worst part was probably soldering the PSP specific components that JLC PCB didn't have, which was just the DC barrel jack input and the headphone jack, as well as putting on all the wires for programming the PS Pi's microcontroller. But if you order these from other mod with the solder avoidance service, you can skip all these steps and just get straight into installation inside the PSP shell. And this mod has been been designed and updated to work perfectly with the Raspberry Pi Compute Module 4. So if you get one of those, it should be smooth sailing, but as of a couple months ago, we now have the Pi Compute Module 5, which... Hey everybody, this is Editing Logan, and uh, as you might have been able to tell, what I just said is completely inaccurate. I started working on this video about seven months ago now, and I've only just gotten around to actually continuing it, but at the time I actually started working on this video, it was still pretty recent is way faster by all accounts, but unfortunately it's not as simple as just dropping in a new board and playing all your favorite games. Aside from all of the experiments that have already been done by others up until this point, I spent about a week straight with the hardware build, plus configuring drivers, modding the Linux kernel, building RetroPie, thanks again to the tutorial by Make or Break Society, uh, not to mention testing different emulators, trying to nail down thermals, and working around other various issues that just really didn't make a whole lot of sense. For example, surprisingly, a lot of Wii and GameCube games are running at perfect frame rates, but 
only if you have a power cable plugged into the console, because running Dolphin consumes so much power that it'll overwhelm the battery and trigger its overcurrent protection. Not to mention, the Compute Module 5 just runs really, really hot, and after a while, does start to thermal throttle, but you can overcome this issue with enough determination. Other than that, it's just the little things, like the fact that the audio output is broken on the Pi 5, and unlike the Pi 4, there's no on-screen display to show different screen dimming levels or the current volume, but yeah, I can live with that. The point I'm trying to make is, it's gonna take a while, and the Pi 5 is far from working perfectly inside the PS Pi, but I'm hopeful that all of these issues can be ironed out over the coming months, as people get more familiar with the Compute Module 5 and all of its odd behavior. But let's stop complaining for a moment, because having something as powerful as the Compute Module 5 stuck inside such a compact handheld is honestly just way too cool. I've always been a fan of the aesthetics and form factor of the PSP, and it's honestly hard to believe that this is working at all after all the different problems that I had to try to figure out while getting this project together. It's hard to overstate just how much nicer the screen is over the original 480 by 272 TFT panel that came with the original PSP. Colors are just incredibly vibrant by comparison, and emulating PSP games that double their native resolution on a PSP is probably one of the coolest things I've seen in a while. And of course, part of me is really happy that this handheld is running regular Raspbian, since I can SSH in and get access to any part of the system, and if I want, I can enable a desktop session, run the included mouse driver, and use my PSP as a terrible web browsing machine, so to that end, we've gone full circle. I also installed the Aether SX2 PS2 emulator, and while I did actually get it running once, that required the use of a different kernel, which undid a fix that corrected the screen color layout on Compute Module 5, so all of the colors were broken, and for some reason the games quit loading after I rebooted the system once, so I lost the patience to keep messing with it. Uh, maybe this is something to revisit once Compute Module 5 is more stable, but for now we'll consider that extremely experimental. And speaking of extremely experimental, an ARM 64 JIT was very recently unveiled for RPCS3 that has apparently allowed people to play PS3 games on their Raspberry Pi 5s. I know that that won't work on mine because I only got my hands on a 2GB compute module in time to make this video, but I really want to see someone more ambitious than me try to get PS3 games running on a PSP. But I probably shouldn't get my hopes up until we get a Raspberry Pi 6 or Raspberry Pi 7, honestly. For the time being, as cool as it is, I'm probably going to ditch the Compute Module 5 until it has better support since it's just not incredibly practical in its current form, and thankfully that's really easy to do. I can honestly say that the PS Pi with the Compute Module 4 feels like a very mature and well put together product, and it really puts all the work that's gone into this project in a better light. Either way, that's pretty much all I have to say about the PS Pi mod, so let me know if this is something you would ever consider doing to your own handheld, and maybe if you have any suggestions as to what other kinds of super cursed console mods I could try to do in the future. So with all that said, I hope you enjoyed the video, thanks for watching, and as always, have a good one.